Antonin Leopold de Vorjac's unique style of composing music made him one of the first Czech composers to achieve global recognition. Born on the 8th of September 1841 in Nela Hosvez, a small town near Prague during the Austrian Empire, into a family of 16. His parents, Frantisek Dvorak and Anna Dvorak, had 14 children, and Dvorak was the first child and son of the family. Dvorak grew up in a household with a solid Christian faith. They attended the Roman Catholic in the village's church of St. Andrew. They were also baptized there when he and his siblings were children. Dvorak had a deep love for Bohemian culture, which influenced his music greatly. Dvorak started primary school in 1847, where he was taught how to play the violin by school teacher Joseph Spitz. He became pretty good that he joined the village band and began to play with them. He also played the violin in church. His father was happy with his talent and thought it would be best for him to live with his uncle so that he could learn the German language, which influenced a significant part of his music career. When he got to his uncle's place, he was introduced to Antonin Limon, who became his German language teacher. He taught Dvorak music theory and showed him an outstanding composer who achieved great feats. Antonin also taught Dvorak how to play musical instruments like the organ, violin and piano. Antonin Liman was, however, not an easy man to learn from. He was harsh, aggressive and had a temper which Dvorak sometimes felt. Regardless, Dvorak was grateful to be able to learn from him and had a lot of regard for him. Soon after, he was introduced to new teachers, Franz Hank and Teska Kamins. They both confirmed that Dvorak was a talented boy and would have a great career in music, while they taught him more about music theory and organ. Dvorak was sure he wanted to have a music career. Still, he needed his teachers to convince his father of his talent and possible opportunities before he was allowed. Dvorak's father agreed to let his son become a composer only if he would become an organist, which he agreed to. In 1857, Dvorak's journey towards a career as an organist began. He enrolled in the city's organ school, where he studied organ with Joseph Forster, singing with Joseph Zvonaf, and theory with Frantisk Blasik. He also took extra classes to learn more German. Being a student was already challenging enough. It was even more challenging balancing it with an extra class, but that didn't stop Dvorak from taking a job as an extra violist in several orchestras and bands. By 1859, he successfully graduated from the organ school. Being a bright boy, he graduated as the second best in his class. Dvorak might have hoped that graduating would launch him into a successful career and maybe the experience he had gathered might just be enough. Still, young Dvorak was in for a real shock. Before continuing this intriguing tale about one of the most outstanding composers, this would be an excellent time to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos like this. Dvorak couldn't afford concert tickets. Playing in the orchestra allowed him to listen to music. He began to perform in Prague's restaurants after joining the Karol Komzak's orchestra. Dvorak was well-skilled and it was difficult not to notice how good he was. This drew the attention of Jean Nepomuk May, who worked as a bohemian provisional theatre. Jean then invited Dvorak to join the orchestra there. While playing the viola at the Bohemian Provisional Theatre, Dvorak got the opportunity to play in an orchestra conducted by Richard Wagner, a German composer who Dvorak had great admiration for. Before Jan left, Dvorak was earning close to $7 every month, which enabled him to have a decent life. While he was at the Provisional Theatre Orchestra, he did several compositions, some of which included string quintets in A minor in 1861, first string quartet in 1862. In 1870, he composed Alfred, which was his first opera, and by 1905, the first overture was publicly performed. Dvorak left the Provisional Theatre Orchestra in 1871 and gave his first public performance, which he composed, titled Vis Pomenani Reminiscence, released in October 1871. Dvorak's love life began to take shape. While working as a music teacher in 1869, he fell in love with Josefina Karmakova, Dvorak confessed his feelings to Josefina Karmakova. She turned down his proposal and instead married Count Vaclav Kunich, whom she was in love with at that time. Dvorak went ahead to propose to Josefina Karmakova's younger sister, Anna Karmakova, who was also his student. By November 1873, 
they were married. They moved to a small town where Dvorak did a lot of composition. He and Anna's marriage wasn't an easy one. They had a lot of financial crises and suffered many losses. Their marriage did produce three children, but they lost them all between 1876 to 1877. By 1878, she gave birth to their first healthy child and gave birth to five more children that survived. Soon after he left the Provisional Theatre Orchestra, he began working as an organist in St. Elderberts in Prague. De Vorjak received a significantly smaller salary that was barely enough for him and his family, but he was appreciative of how welcoming the church was to him and his family. While in Prague, De Vorjak composed his piano quintet in A major and was performed in November 1872. This was his first piece to be played in a concert, and it was done by a team of players and coordinated by Prochaska. By March 1873, his next composition titled The Heirs of the White Mountain was performed by the Prague Hlalo Choral Society of 300 singers and conducted by Carol Bendy, someone he called a friend. His composition was a massive success in Prague and would soon spread worldwide. By the age of 33, the Vorjak had already made a name for himself as a composer in Prague and was looking to get his work far across the Prague border. In 1874, he applied for the Austrian State Prize for composition. By 1875, he was announced as the winner of the prize. In 1877, the Vorjak applied for the Austrian Prize competition again. This time he submitted other music, including his Moravian duets and some piano concerto. By December the same year, he received a letter saying he had won the prize and offered to promote his compositions internationally. Around that period, Dvorak released more pieces, including his Slavonic dances. The dance was well received in many countries, including England, the United States and France. Soon, he began to visit these countries to perform. In 1883, he successfully performed his Stabat Mater in London. He also had many successful performances in the United States and the United Kingdom. He also wrote and performed Dumkey Trio, which became a piece of very successful chamber music. Soon after, he began holding reputable positions. He visited England nine times, each time conducting compositions done by him. His international recognition continued to grow with St. Petersburg and Moscow performances. He was appointed as a professor at the Prague Conservatory in 1891. He left the position to take up the role of the director of the National Conservatory of Music of America, New York City, where he was paid a shocking $15,000 as his annual salary. His reputation in the United States increased even more, especially after releasing yet another successful orchestral work called The Symphony from the New World. He continued to write more pieces, however. The April 1893 economic crisis caused his salary to be reducted, but didn't affect his recognition, which instead went up. In 1895, Dvorak returned to Bohemia, mostly because he missed home, and he felt there was still much yet to offer his nation. He continued to show how versatile he could be in his composition by releasing more operas and some smaller works. His music carried the Czech national spirit even beyond the border of the Czech nation, which has always been his desire. His legendary works in classical music are well acknowledged and symbolized in various places. His statues were erected at the Stuyvesant Square in Manhattan. He also has a statue erected in his honor in Prague. De Vorjak was said to have a pleasant personality. His humility was always apparent, and so was his love for God. On the 1st of May, at the age of 62, he died from a stroke after suffering several illnesses. Today, the Dvorak's Prague International Music Festival holds annually to celebrate the works of the musical genius, Antonin Leopold. Dvorak. Share some of your favorite Antonin Dvorak compositions in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're yet to subscribe, do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our interesting videos like this one.